episode of Tom's Geeky Garage. Um, so yeah, I've been gone for a while. Took a few months off um, while my newborn um, kind of grew up a little bit. Um, obviously, when you bring a newborn home, it's chaotic. And it, it literally took all my time and all my wife's time combined just to find a flow. And um, well, I'm happy to say that after two months, we're finally finding a flow. Um, so yeah, so right now my daughter's asleep and I have a little bit of time. Um, so uh, I'm going to go over um, this idea I had. So what we're looking at here on screen is a, it's a Kenner-sized ghost trap that what I wanted to do was have it functional, which means you step on the pedal or push the pedal and the doors open. And this is something that's incredibly hard at the scale of the Kenner action figures. Um, so I've tried attempts, I've attempted um, this several times. Um, and this is the second attempt here, what you're looking at here. Um, and the idea on this one was this, um, this pedal here was actually a hollow rubber piece. Um, and inside here I had a piston. And the idea was like the old classic toy um, trap. If you remember the Kenner one from the 80s, the big one, the playset one, you'd step on this, the silicone pedal and it would push a little bit of air pressure down, uh, down a tube. Um, oops. It would push a little air pressure down a tube and it would basically have a little piston in here that would go up and down and that little mechanism is what would make the flaps of the door open. So I tried this on my second approach. Um, but just at scale, there wasn't enough air inside the pedal, and the tube was too thin for this to work. Um, I tried uh, several different builds and just never was able to get it to function right, so I kind of just canned the idea. And last night, I was um, sleeping, surprisingly. Um, I don't get to sleep that often, so when I do, it's, it's a surprise. But I was sleeping... And I came up with this idea on how maybe to get this work. Um, so right now, this is about 40 millimeters. So it's about, it's maybe a tad bigger than the Kenner ones, just a tad. But uh, it's, I think it's going to fit the characters well. And instead of doing this piston thing, I think I'm going to get rid of that, um, that idea. Get rid of the piston. Here's the doors. But what I think I can do <coughs> is I, <coughs> excuse me, I think I can rig these doors um, with an elastic band that puts a constant pressure on them that makes them want to stay open. And then what I'm thinking is maybe I can, um, I think I can take this handle and the, the shaft here, the shaft and the handle as one piece and then have it pivot down somewhere around here so this whole section will pivot right like the whole handle will move and then what I can do is if I have this on a pressurized where it wants to stay open I think I can put a small catch in here and then have it connected to this handle so basically you'd push on this this handle and it would um, here let me put a little let me put a thing in here to kind of help me demonstrate this because I haven't built it yet uh, um, but this is the idea. So, all right. So this is the um, let's say this is the okay. Let's say this is the handle here. Oh, hold on. Right. So, if this was the shaft, I would have it mounted down here on a on a swivel, and then somewhere up here, I'd have a little catch. And the idea is, I think I can have it to where when you uh, when you push on the back of this handle right here, this thing will kind of come back like that, just a little bit. And I think that will be enough to release the catch, making the door spring open. Now, 
obviously they won't uh, they won't spring back close. You'll have to reset it. You'll have to push it down and lock them back in position. And I can put this little arm here with the handle. I can have this spring loaded so you just push them down and it will snap and this will snap back and lock it. And then you push it again and it will pop the doors open. Now, I'm going to have to totally remodel. I'm going to have to totally remodel this whole thing and start from scratch, unfortunately, because the issue that I had before um, was these doors. One, were just so tiny and thin. And I had these very, very small, like, pinhole, which is... At the scale it used to be, this was about the size of a needle. Um, so if you have like a safety pin, like I don't know, I think it's like maybe like two millimeters or something like that. Um, they were just real fragile. They broke. They were hard to print. Um, so there are things that I'm going to have to scale bigger and kind of lose some of the design um, to make it work. So I'm going to try to keep it as close as possible. But like I feel like these hinges are going to be a lot bigger. So there might be like... I'm not sure. I might have to do some special hinges or something here. Um, and then other than that, yeah, it's just about um, um, building some parts on the doors. So down here on this end, I think is where the, the um, elastic or the spring will be that will actually make the doors want to swing open constantly. And I can show you kind of what I'm thinking on that. Um, as far as the doors, hold on, let me see if I can put some pieces in here. Let me see. So, um, I think what I'm thinking is, so let, let's say like, um, so it's going to be like a slice of the door, I think. Uh, so if we... I feel like I need to do sound effects now because through my <laughs> my whole day now that I have a daughter I'm constantly having to make everything have sound effects so she doesn't start screaming <laughs> and now I just do it I'm at work you know like you know doing a television show and I'm like talking to a producer and I'm like you know just make it go <laughs> and then he's looking at me like I'm crazy all right all right all right enough with that craziness So what I'm thinking, um, let's get like a thing that we can, uh, uh, this is going to represent, this is going to represent the, um, the hinge itself, like the hinging point, uh, and we'll just rotate that bad boy down, oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do, I wanted to rotate it, there it is. Yeah, so, yeah, things have been good around the house. I, uh, we, uh, 13 Doors of Shandor is still going, good. We have an editor working on the, uh, first trailer now. We had, um, a very good musician write a score for us, and then we had a Foley guy do all the sound effects. And we've got the sound effects and the score sent over to the editor, so he's just editing the trailer now okay so let's just look at this so the idea would be so like if you imagine this is like a sliver this would be the door here there would be a piece like an arm going down inside of it and what I think I can do is between this arm and this arm I think I can put like an elastic spring or I can put um, like a, a rubber band or a spring between it and they'll naturally want to pull together. Um, obviously, they can't be that long because that would not work. Let's shorten it. It'd be more like... I mean, it doesn't have to be, like... It doesn't have to be super long. It just literally needs to have enough to kind of give some leverage. But like I said, I think... Um, I think if I put between this point and this point a spring, when you close... Oops. When you close these doors down, 
it would get tighter and tighter and tighter and tighter and then when you get down to about right here that's when the doors on the other end would latch to uh, the latch connected to the handle that I was talking about so it would snap shut and lock and then when you would push the uh, handle back it would release this and then once that latch is released the springs would do the work and fling the doors open that's the idea okay so I think I can do this at the small like Kenner size scale um, but we'll have to see and then the trap obviously won't the, the pedal won't do anything it will be connected with the cable just like the other ones but at least the doors will be operational you know and I think that would be I think that would be cool um, so that's what we're going to do on today's show. Um, we're going to just uh, start remodeling this. I'm going to have to remodel this all from scratch um, to make the new mechanisms work. You know, um, I was wanting to pick up this model and like be able to modify this thing, but um, this thing's all hacked up because I've already cut it up and you know glued it together several times, and it's just got all this ugly geometry. And I can think I can just start fresh. You know. So yeah, I think this would be pretty cool. So, um, yeah. So let's uh, let's get started on the modeling here. Um, I'm gonna keep this part. Um, I'm gonna keep this part in the computer. So I'm gonna basically be modeling over this one, so I get everything the exact same scale as this. And just uh, I'm just gonna simplify it so I can put in this uh, handle that moves. So we got the mechanism will be one part, and the doors will be the other. And then once we get that, I think it will be a one part, two, three, four. I think it will be four pieces, the two doors, the main body, and then the handle. And then we'll use, like I said before, we'll use some, um, some metal pins to actually hinge the doors, kind of like we did when we did the micro machines. And then uh, we'll have a metal pin that will hinge this piece down here inside so there'll probably be a little hole right here going all the way through that we'll put a, a pin through and then we can um, glue it in and maybe hide it maybe fill it so you don't see it um, so yeah let's uh, let's get started on that alright so um, starting out uh, the main thing I just want to do is put in a, a, a kind of a base box and this box is going to be the main box shell of the whole trap and I'm using the um, original 3D model as kind of a guide on size. Um, so here I'm just like quickly just putting in some um, rough geometry for all the parts and um, I'm not really working off blueprints or anything I'm kind of doing this all um, by hand in real time so um, it's kind of a trial and error thing for me but you can see just quickly making the handle the swivels and latch and now it's time for me to actually start cutting out the, you can see here I've cut out the um, kind of a little wedge where the handle will fit. Pre-made all the cutouts here. And I'm cutting uh, a lot of the uh, modeling out of this video because a lot of it's just time consuming and you don't really need to know all that. But you can kind of get a gist of how this goes together as far as cutting and putting in stuff. Uh, here I'm just working on the um, hinges. I decided to keep the hinges the same as the original design where I'm using these these um, round pieces as kind of supports. So there will be two round things on each end and then there will be two actually on the door that will kind of butt up and that's because the pins are so big at this scale if I just did it without these it would break and be too thin. So these are just there for just functionality. Uh, they don't really match the um, trap design from the cartoon or anything but they need to be there to make this work um, but I think it's a small it's a small giveaway or it's a small you know small thing no one will really notice it um, main thing on working on these doors was um, here you go you can see now you can see our old version there and then the new one on the left and you can um, you can see the little round things I was telling you about on the doors but it doesn't look that bad I think it's okay See, yeah, there you go. Now, these doors are going to be a lot better than the old ones because they're going to be a lot stronger. And you can see the the switch handle there. 
and I end up having to make the back a separate piece um, and I just glue it on after the fact because uh, I needed room to get the handle in when I'm assembling this thing but uh, yeah I think that's pretty much it um, this is the main shell uh, it's all one piece and then the handle and the door so it's only five pieces for the whole the whole toy here um, I try to keep the pieces down to a minimum I don't like making toys that have a thousand pieces so I try to uh, try to do it but uh, now we can move on to printing and you can see the printing files here right off the printer um, I printed two copies just in case I broke one but I didn't so let's go to painting all right finally after multiple failed attempts I created the pieces here so we got the two doors the rear the handle and the main box and I loaded this one with springs so it has um, the pins are pieces of uh, safety pins the hinges but uh, finally got one that uh, that works so got the little trap here which I'll paint this one but there it goes now we have this ugly rubber band in there but that's uh, that's fine by me for now since it actually works so it's just the handle spring loaded as you can see so you just push it back Lock the doors down. Right. Boom. So I will paint this, and this will probably be it for me as far as this goes. Yeah, a little ghost trap there. Sweet. All right, so now we're gonna move on just to painting the thing. Um, nothing special happened here. I just brush painted it uh, with a, I think the color is um, Apple Barrels Cobalt Blue, which matches the other pack and um, PKE meter that I made in the past. Um, this stuff is really watery, so it doesn't go on with one coat, but the benefit of the watery paint is that when it dries, it dries real smooth without brush strokes. So that's why I decided to brush this rather than airbrush it. Um, so just going to uh, do several coats of blue and then go in with my detail brush and add in the colors which now you can see I'm finished here so for the stripes on the actual uh, doors instead of trying to hand paint those which I fell at every time I try to do that um, I decided just to print them out on some paper uh, cut them to fit and then I'm just going to glue those on so just make my own little paper stickers now I actually do have water slide paper which I probably should have used and just did water slides for this but um, I knew it was gonna actually take a lot of wear and tear from you touching it a lot so I just did some uh, paper stickers I think they're gonna be fine um, it took a little while to get them on um, just because I um, had to cut them to fit around all the hinges and make sure this doors open smoothly um, with the actual stickers on there um, and then I'm just using Elmer's glue um, just to glue them on just old school white glue nothing fancy just getting everything to fit right and testing make sure they open and close and I think it's pretty much ready to go all right, so here is our set. This is the trio here. You can see all of it together, all of it matching. Um, we have uh, our our proton pack here that we made a few episodes ago with our LED lights in it. So the um, uh, lights on the pack work and the lights on the wand. You can see here. Just push that little button in. It's kind of hid that button away. 
Uh, if you haven't seen that, just uh, go look at the channel. There's a few episodes back I did that, and that's a pretty cool episode. We have this PKE meter, which matches the real Ghostbusters cartoon. Um, we made this, I think, this season, too. I think we made that the very first episode of the season. And we have, finally, today's trap, which is um, pretty cool. So here it's working. Yeah. Um, I just painted the inside blue. I was going to paint the inside black, but um, just... You know, after I got it built, I was like, eh, it doesn't really matter. You just got to push the doors down to reset it, and then you can uh, push the handle again to pop it out. Um, yeah, it would have been nice to be able to make this where I, you hit the button a second time and the door shut, but that would take some crazy engineering to get that work. It had to be work like a switchblade, or not switchblade, but a stiletto-type knife, you know, and I am not going to do that for this. But anyways, hope you liked watching the show. Here's... Here's all the stuff together. Um, hope you liked it. And I'll have the STL files for this trap up if you guys want to make your own. You just need some safety pins, um, rubber bands, and the pieces that you can 3D print. Um, and you can, uh, you know, make yourself one of these. Um, oh, and the nylon cable, the little nylon strip there. You can get um, eBay or something. But yeah, hope you liked watching. And uh, we'll have some more shows for you in the future. Thank you.